With hope fading that additional survivors will emerge from the sunken Sewilho ferry, how will those who remain behind cope with the recent trauma? Psychological services are available for survivors and family members of the missing, but not many people are known to use the services and how much more treatment is needed long after this initial event passes. Joining, joining us now is Dr. Tan Hyun Gyeong from Samsung Medical Center. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Tan. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, even though the survivors could be considered extremely lucky to be alive, they will have to live with the trauma of this sinking in the form of post-traumatic stress disorder. What symptoms are they displaying and what happens if they don't get treatment? Well, I've heard reports that there have been many students who have displayed high levels of anxiety and depression, and they are already undergoing treatment, which is reassuring. The symptoms of post-traumatic stress can include re-experiencing the traumatic event in the form of bad dreams or flashbacks, having trouble sleeping, feeling irritable or emotionally numb, or having overwhelming guilt or shame. They may also avoid people, places, objects, or events that remind them of the traumatic situation. Severe depression and thoughts of suicide can accompany the extreme guilt of survivors. If friends or family detect suicidal thoughts or behavior in a survivor, this must be treated as a medical emergency, and the person should be taken to the hospital immediately for evaluation and treatment. Also, if post-traumatic stress does not get properly treated, it can lead to substance abuse and severe mood disorder, such as depression, later on. Well, students of the affected high school, whether super survivors or those who stayed behind, will go back to classrooms that will be noticeably emptier. How do you treat adolescents? Uh, what do they need at this point? Well, one small piece of good news is that children and adolescents tend to be quite resilient, and the majority of them who undergo this type of stressful situation will eventually return to normal life after weeks, months, or years. In terms of treatment, they need to be in a safe, calm, and supportive environment. They need to be listened to carefully and patiently, and they should be encouraged to express what is on their minds. Professional psychological counseling should be made available, and it is important to remember that sometimes the symptoms and signs do not show up until months later. So friends and family should be vigilant about detecting changes in behavior or attitude that may signal PTSD. Well, families of the missing had clung on to hope that air pockets would keep their children alive. How must they transition to the grim reality that their loved ones are dead? Uh, well, there is a series of changes, of, sorry, a series of stages in the grieving process, including disbelief and an inability to accept the loss. Then there may be anger, depression, guilt, before a parent finally arrives at acceptance. Uh, relatives, friends, co-workers, and people in their faith network all need to be supportive. You know, in Korea, we say that when one's parents pass away, we bury them in the earth. But if one's child has passed away, we bury them in our hearts. Grief counseling and psychiatric treatment may be necessary in some extreme cases. Uh, many outside observers have been shocked at how obedient the children and passengers were to the announcements to stay put, even though they could have escaped to safety. Is there a strong psychological pull to obey in times of emergency, or do you think Korean cultural hierarchies played a part? Well, when you are in an unfamiliar situation and in panic mode, it is not unusual to follow the directions of a person whom you believe to be the leader someone more experienced and authoritative than you are. That being said, I think that we need to examine whether we should be teaching our children how to think and act more independently, and whether the traditional top-down, one-way pattern of communication and teaching is the best educational paradigm. All right, Dr. Tan from the Samsung Medical Center, thank you so much for your insight tonight. Thank you for having me.